right, all right, don't rush me. Well, Martin's not the kind of man you can keep waiting, you know. Well, what's so important about him? His soul. It means half a million dollars a year to this company. Oh, money, money, money. Is that all you think about? Of course. What else is there? A person's feelings. That's what else there is. My feelings. I'm doing the best I can, Larry. I'm a human being. I'm not, I'm not a machine. Yeah, what's the matter with you? Nothing. You're crying. I'm not crying. And why are your eyes all moist? Mm -hmm. The sunlight. Besides, I have hay fever. Well, the blinds are drawn and you never had hay fever before in your life. All right, so I'm crying. I am crying. So what? A person has a right to have a good cry once in a while. <laughs> uh, Darren checked these over yesterday, and uh, I feel the Stanwick account will go for this approach. Bill, are you going to eat your pickle? Hmm? Oh, here. Help yourself. Thanks. If I could suggest a change here, I think we ought to accent the product itself more rather than the copy. It would be uh, more of an eye-catcher that way. Larry, are you going to eat your pickle? Uh, now, I think uh, that we've touched all the bases. Unless you'd like to add something, Mr. Martin. Well, it's just a notion. I'm inclined to agree with Larry. Mr. Martin, are you going to eat your pickle? <laughs> yes, I am. I'd like to see the product a little larger like it was jumping out of the ad at you. Exactly. Would have more impact that way. You're not eating it. <laughs> well, I'll eat it when I feel like it. If you don't want it, it'll suddenly go to waste. Darren. <laughs> it's his pickle. It's just lying there. It's just lying there. Then why can't I have it? Darren. You have no intention at all of eating that pickle. Look, we're not going to have an argument about a pickle. I demand your pickle. <laughs> Gentlemen, if you'll excuse us for a moment. I'm sorry, Mr. Martin. <laughs> what on earth got into you? I don't know. It was like some kind of crazy fixation. I just had to have his pickle. Darren, I think your wife's having a baby is really getting to you. You're like one big peeled nerve. That's how I feel. Look, why don't you take the rest of the day off? Go see a doctor, get him to give you a tranquilizer. Maybe I should. I, I just haven't been myself all day. I'll see you in the morning. Get a good night's sleep. You told me. You see on the back, Larry. <laughs> Eddie, can I have a room for the night? Yes, sir, Mr. Tate, room 909. I'll ring for a bellboy. Don't bother. I might ask you the same question. It's none of your business. Obviously, they got our rooms mixed up. I'll get another one. Don't tell me you had a fight with Louise. 
That's my business. I suppose you had a fight with Samantha. That's my business. What's the matter with you, Larry? How could you walk out on a great girl like Louise? And how could you run out on a marvelous girl like Samantha? I thought you didn't like Samantha. I thought you didn't like Louise. What gave you that idea? Your big mouth. I only said those things in anger. You should have known that. So did I. And if you weren't so thick-headed, you'd know I'm crazy about Sam. Larry, we're a couple of numbskulls. You said it. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry Larry. <laughs> well, now we can enjoy our newfound bachelorhood together. Right. Ah, freedom. It's wonderful. It's marvelous. Do anything we want. No one to answer to. Play poker. Go bowling. Golf every weekend. More time at the club. Yeah. <sighs> I hate poker and bowling. Golf gives me the hives. This place is depressing. Hi, Larry. I, uh, guess you're still pretty upset about last night. I passed upset at 3 o'clock this morning. Right now, I'm up to homicidal. Mr. K. Baker was pretty mad last night. I wonder what he's thinking this morning. I know what I'm thinking. But I'm too much of a gentleman to use certain phrases about a woman. So let's put it this way. If I saw that your wife was going to be hit by a falling safe, I'd just stand there and smile. Harry, that's not very nice. I passed nice at 2 o'clock this morning, right after K. Baker phoned to cancel the account. Fortunately, I was able to talk him out of it. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Larry, but Sam was provoked into doing what she did. It was thoughtless and inexcusable. A child would have had more sense. Wait a minute. Kate Baker's daughter deserved it. She's a sarcastic snob. And her father ought to wash out her mouth with some of that crummy detergent he makes. That crummy detergent happens to keep us in business. Sure, Miss K. Baker can do no wrong as long as her father's got wall-to-wall -wall money. If you were a billionaire, Samantha still acted like a child. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> At least she could have used a little discretion like my wife. Larry, I've got news for you. That wife of yours has come up with a few nuggets herself. Oh, really? I mean, if we're talking about boners, let's get all the names on the list. And name me just one boner that Louise ever pulled. Just one. There was the time she thought the client's wife was his mother. There was the time she forgot the theater tickets. There was... I said one. <laughs> so don't go making cracks about my wife. Just worry about that cuckoo that you're married to. Well, if Louise is such a drag, you don't have to associate with her anymore. Agreed. And you can consider Samantha off limits, too. In fact, you don't have to associate with me anymore. Well, let's add my vote to that proposal and make it unanimous. Great. You keep your big flat feet out of my office, and I'll keep mine out of yours. I'll go you one better. I'll keep my feet and everything that's attached to them out of the entire building. I quit. Good. You just saved me two weeks severance pay. Cheap. 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 <laughs> We'll have our brandy in the den, all right, Mr. Campbell? As long as it's brandy, we'll have it any place you choose. Darren, look! This is a surprise Andorra was talking about. Sam! I never realized I had such a beautifully shaped head. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Oh, you little dickens. Oh, it was sort of a party favor. Mother helped. Again. <laughs> oh, yes. It's amazing how much help we get around here from Sam's mother. <laughs> I, I would have done one of Mr. Campbell, but I didn't know what he looked like. <laughs> Sweetheart, can I see you in the kitchen for a minute? Uh, hmm? I'll watch that for you. <laughs> you know something, Campbell? This thing looks like it could talk. How do you do? <laughs> How about a shot of that brandy? Right, right. Mother! Mother! Darren's willing to apologize. Mother! 
Maybe I better go and see what's happening in the other room. You keep trying. I think I'll put me where the light's better. Easy does it, fella. <laughs> <laughs> there, got the statue wired for sound, huh? Why, did you hear something? Uh, yeah, why? Did you hear something? <laughs> <laughs> Can't you guys take a joke? Why don't we have our brandy in the den? Yeah. Why don't we have our brandy in the den? Mr. <laughs> to leave you out of that meeting, gentlemen. <laughs> I, uh... Sam made a, a set of those for each room. Let me make something quite clear, Stephen. I've got ten million dollars in the bank. And the way I got it there was by refusing to make any useless expenditures. The minute you spend one unnecessary dollar, you're through. And I deserve to be, Mr. Bigelow, because there's no greater crime than spending money unnecessarily. You know, I think we're going to get along all right. Uh, Stevens is right. <laughs> but on the other hand, you have to spend money to make money. <laughs> you're only saying that, Larry, because we're in the advertising business where we take 15% off the top. <laughs> Did I tell you, Mr. Bigelow, this boy is the kind you can't buy? Honest, open, fearless. <laughs> Cigar bother you? No, no. A uh, uh, careful one? Oh, yes, thanks. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't believe it if I told you how little I pay for these cigars. I get them directly from the maker. I'll put this up against any five-cent cigar in the country. Really? I'd like to get some. Well, I can give you his name. Jose Ortega, 1555 Bleecker Street, apartment four. <laughs> hey, here, have another for later. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Bigelow, <laughs> Stevens will get to work immediately on the new layouts. Uh, meanwhile, I've had the art department redo some of your previous ads to give you an idea of our approach. Wait a minute. I didn't request it. It's uh, been done at our own expense. <laughs> well, let's look at it by all means. <laughs> it just occurs to me. Tires are black and white. There's no need to go to the added expense of a four-color process. <laughs> Good thinking. <laughs> How do you like that for integrity? Huh? Isn't he something? All he cares about is cutting down the costs for the client. <laughs> No matter what it costs us. <laughs> and my boy, why don't we just step into your office and let Mr. Bigelow here examine this stuff at his own temple? <laughs> what are you trying to do, Darren? What do you mean? <sighs> that cheap act you're putting on is great. But what good is it if you blow the deal? Larry, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come off it, Darren. You heard the Bigelow was a tight wad, and you're just trying to humor him, which is a great approach. Don't misunderstand me. And when you actually took one of those horrible cigars, I considered it an act of personal heroism. <laughs> I can still taste them. And you didn't even smoke one. You don't have to smoke one of those cigars to taste them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hi. Uh, did I forget something? Yes. You forgot to show me my painting. That was not very nice of you to rush off like that. I'll forgive you for this. Samantha, is there any reason why I should not see my painting? None that I can think of. You're not only fired, but I'll make it my life's work to see to it that you're never hired any place, any time, anywhere. <laughs> How can you call this a bad joke? Huh? Well, he repainted it. Oh, don't be ridiculous. He got here just, just two minutes before we did. What are you crying about? Because you called it an atrocity. 
identity. But it looks exactly like me. <laughs> oh, Louise. Oh. Oh, Louise, no, it's a compliment, Louise. Oh. No, you see, what he's saying is that nothing could come close to, to your real inner beauty. Oh. Well, after all, a canvas is one-dimensional, and you are, are a lovely, vibrant, exciting, three-dimensional woman. Really, Larry? Would Sam lie to you? <laughs> I can't take my eyes off me. How did you change it? Larry, I give you my solemn word, I did not change it. That is not the same face. Well, of course it is. You know what I think it was? You were upset because I blitzed you at gin. And in the stress and anger of the moment, well, you just weren't seeing things clearly. It can happen. Ask any psychiatrist. Oh. I'd like to believe that. Aaron. I know it's asking too much, but, well, you're so talented, and, and you paint so quickly, and Larry's birthday is coming up. Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> Darren, I like your spunk. But as your boss, uh, don't forget, I hold your fortune in my hand. I want a campaign that says you've got two choices. Use Adrian Sebastian products or be ugly. Oh, Charlie, that is pretty crass. <laughs> yes. Perhaps that is, uh, shall we say, blunt. It sells. And I make the decisions, right, Adrian? Oh, yes. When I think of it, uh, perhaps uh, sometimes the hard sell does hit the target. <laughs> so far, we've had nothing but interruptions and detours. I think you're trying to cover up a lousy campaign. Not at all. Here, look at these. I think you'd better call the office, Charlie, and tell them we're going to be a little late. Yeah. I'll dial it for you while you look at the first presentation. <laughs> I'd rather do it myself. It'd be my pleasure. Darren, put down that phone. <laughs> Sorry, my apologies, Mr. Darren, could I speak to you for a moment while I go over the ideas? Uh, certainly, Larry. Uh, excuse us. Of course. After you. Go ahead. No, please. <laughs> Just what are you trying to do? Is something wrong? <sighs> You're perspiring. Stop that. If you're not blowing your mind, you're sure blowing this meeting. Harry, there are guests. I'm just trying to be considerate. You're overdoing it. Will you just pitch that presentation? I think she digs the soft cell. But he makes the decisions. But it's her company. I'll get the other presentation. <laughs> Here, I'll do that for you, Miss Stringer. Well, I can do it. It's just that it's so... I know. It's a messy man's job. I'm not knocked out by this, but it is hard sell, and that's what we want. I'm not sure, Charlie. I think we, we should look at Mr. Stevens' second concept. Well, uh, maybe he can come up with a tough, hard sell with the uh, warmth. He has ten seconds. And it bothers me seeing a pretty girl like you getting her fingers dirty. Very sweet of you. There's still a lot of chivalry left in the world today, Miss Brown. Thank you, Mr. Darren. <laughs> I've got it right here, Larry. Tate, I've got a gut feeling that you and uh, Sir Walter Raleigh here haven't got anything to interest us. Really, Charlie, Mr. Stevens was only showing common courtesy. Well, courtesy is a refuge of scoundrels and yes-men. I've got a feeling he's both. Adrian, <laughs> we're running late. I think you're making a mistake, but it was a pleasure meeting you. Both. <laughs> now, that's a darn shame. <laughs> Losing several million in billing? Yeah. I guess you could call it that. A darn shame. Unless you want to call it a catastrophe. <laughs> Larry, you're perspiring again. Here. <laughs> Knock off this do good a routine. Flitting around the office like the good fairy. Did it ever occur to you that people want to dial their own phones? Even if it's just to give their fingers a little exercise? <laughs> Larry, I was merely treating our guests as courteously and as politely as I know. And I've had all this <laughs> courtesy bunk. Darren, you've been working too hard. You too, Larry. I want you to take a vacation. Get a little rest. 
Larry, that's very considerate, but I don't... No, 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 I insist. Go away somewhere. See the Caribbean. See the islands. See a doctor. A doctor? To help straighten out your thinking. Unkink you. Oh, wait a minute. Larry. It happens in the advertising business, and believe me, I understand. I know the pressures, the tensions, the frustrations, and then poof. So take a year, two years, three if you need it. Larry, that's the most generous thing I've Darren, ever Darren, I didn't mean a vacation with pay. <laughs> when your batteries are recharged and you're back in your old form again, come and see me and we'll talk things over. Well, Larry, say something. It, that's not rational behavior. Speaking of behavior, this is the third time this morning you've provoked hostility in the office. Well, it's not me. No, it's not. You're not yourself. Your personality's taken a swan dive, and two accounts have gone down with it. I just don't understand it, Larry. Neither do I. Why don't you take the afternoon off and talk to someone who might? Like who? Like Bob Farnsworth. The psychiatrist? <laughs> now, just a minute, Larry. A bomb's okay as an occasional golf partner, but I just don't swing with this head-shrinking jack. <laughs> don't be medieval, Darren. You need psychiatric first aid. What I need, Max can handle. Max, he's my favorite bartender. <laughs> Even the door hates me. Another one, Mr. Stevens? No, Max, nothing's going to help. Nobody likes me. Yeah? How come? Down, down, down. Personality crack up. <laughs> hey, buddy boy, you know what? I went to Philadelphia yesterday. Shut up, Harry. <laughs> you sure nobody liked you? They loathe me, the whole world. Hey, pal, you know what? Yeah, we know. Yesterday you went to Philadelphia. And it was closed. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now beat it. Don't bother Mr. Stevens. That's all right, Max. Let him stay. I need a friend. Boy, you are in a bad way. Washed up. My boss even tried to send me to a psychiatrist. Ah, oh, you don't need a psychiatrist, buddy boy. Slam up, Harry. What do you know about it? Last year, I started going to a psychiatrist about my drinking. Are you still going? No, I gave him up. I couldn't afford the booze, and him too. <laughs> Beat it, Harry. <laughs> Who needs you, you crumb? <laughs> you see, Max? Even him. Oh, don't pay any attention to that bum. Everybody treats me like that. Yeah? Well, there's got to be a reason. Maybe your boss was right. Maybe you got one of them complexes. Does it show that much? Oh, I don't know. I ain't no skull doctor. You think I need one, too? Well, it, it can't hurt. You're right, now. Max, you work and slave to build up an organization, and then what happens? One sour apple comes along, and the barrel goes down the drain. Know what I mean? <laughs> Gotta say one thing for you, Max. You're a darn good listener. <laughs> Very good quality in a man. <laughs> What's that? We get all kinds in here, from the normal to the mentally insane. <laughs> Happy Times Bar. Joe the Mixologist speaking. Is Larry Tate there with the fellow in costume? Yeah, they're here. Good, keep them there. I'll do the best I can. Bye. That's where they are. Well, you were lucky. You only had to call about 20 of Larry's favorite bars. <laughs> Yeah, but now that I've found him, what am I going to tell him? Think of Max. 
<laughs> You're gonna go far with McMahon and Tate, because one thing we value... Well, 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 if that isn't speak of the devil. Larry, I've got to talk to you. There's nothing to talk about. All been said and done. <laughs> Come on, Max. This place is getting crowded. You stay there, Max. Now, look, Larry. Max? <laughs> no use pretending. Max has already told me that you asked him to join your new agency. How could he tell you... What new agency? Will you stop it? The one you're raiding my staff and stealing my clients to open is the one. Check, check, please. What, Larry? Uh, uh, here, this should cover it. And I suppose you think that's going to make up for stabbing me in the back, you Brutus. Uh, Larry, uh, doesn't it seem odd to you that uh, Max, as you call him, hasn't said a word all evening? <laughs> well... Some people don't have small talk, but he's a great listener. You can take a lesson from him. Larry, he's not human. Uh, now, now, now you're going overboard. I'll admit he's kind of dull, but... I'm trying to tell you something. He's a doll.